Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is CMG Talk. This is Catherine Gallagher. And I wanted to come on a bit early because I'm really excited to talk about this today. Over the last few weeks, I've been asked to do several presentations and talks in different ways. And it was about managing our time. And I wonder if that's something that you think about. Often it crosses our mind, doesn't it? How time flies. Time goes slow, depending on the circumstances. When I talk about Yerkes Dobson's optimization curve, when I'm talking about business and also about how people feel they're performing and functioning, I talk about the boredom zone, the comfort zone, the stretch zone, strain and crisis zone. And I ask people where they're functioning in their life. And I ask them where they're putting their most time in to developing, creating, challenging, recharging, refueling, energising. Do they make time for what matters? Sometimes people say to me, I know I need to get better sleep. I know I need to get, you know, better with how I eat. I know I need to function better and become more committed to following through. I know I need to communicate better. I know I need to. But I don't have the time. And I go, I have a heart sink feeling. I truly do. It's painful for me. right? Because what they're really saying is, I don't really feel that I am important enough to invest in that area in my life. Hmm? And I'm going, yes, you are. But it's whether or not we want to put the energy in, the effort in. I have had people say to me, it's going to take too much for me. It's going to mean I'm going to have to change. If I make time to put in the effort to that, it's going to be hard, it's going to be too difficult. That's a different matter. If we focus on the end result and we focus on the outcome of the feeling that we're going to achieve, that's what drives us and motivates us because we're led by our emotions and our feelings as human beings. What we often do is we get stopped and blocked by the, it's going to be too painful, it's going to take up too much time, it's, it's going to be too inconvenient, it's going to be too difficult, I'm going to be too tired, I, I'm not going to really be able to have the effort or the energy or I may come up with all the justification modes. Mm-hmm. Not realising that what we're doing is taking up more effort and energy anyway. <laughs> I mean, actually, we would thrive rather than striving. We'd be thriving better. If you put the energy and the effort into the better, the better way of doing things, the things that are going to help us function and flourish more. It doesn't make sense to keep stuck and keep doing something that we've learned to do. We've put the effort and energy into doing, but it's not working for us. It might have caused us to... It might have given us some service... But it's outdone now, it's without growing it now, and it's not really working for us now. But it's habit. And it's easier. And it's something that we default to, but it's not working. And it's not causing us the opportunity to make better change. Making time for what matters. That's really the important step for growth and change. The most important thing I can give is my time. If I don't turn up, show up, make time, give time, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Organising our time. We have to prepare ourselves first of all. We have to be in the right mindset. We have to organise our space around us, our environment around us. We have to create the right environment. 
We have to organise and make sure that we have the right tools, the right resources. We also have to make sure we have the right support, the right connections, the right advice, the right information, the right knowledge. We have to plan, prepare, organise, resource and sometimes delegate out but it has to be the right time with the right people and also it has to make sure that when we're following through that we are all in. And we have to be prepared for the fact that it might not go just as we thought. Thinking of what might potentially happen and not getting deflated by it. Well, that's it. That never worked. Or it never worked out the way I thought it would. So I've given up. People that are effective, really strong time management masters, mastering our time management is a skill that people have to learn and they have to create an intention They have to be focused on managing their time. They have to keep an eye on where their time is. They don't lose track of time. I'm known to be exceptionally good at time management. That's one of the skills that I'm known to be exceptionally good at. I accomplish so much in my time because I am very dedicated and organised in what I do with my time. That doesn't mean to say that I can't have you know, times where I just enjoy and have fun. But I make sure that the things that need to get done, I know when I'm doing it, I know how I'm doing it, I know who's doing it with me, I follow through on it, I'm clear in how I communicate. When we don't have an understanding of time, we often feel that frustration. We often feel that we haven't got and achieved and accomplished. We have to visualise. You'll hear me if you've ever heard me speaking, if you've ever attended any of my trainings or my talks, or if you've listened to previous podcasts, you'll hear me say, you've got to believe to, to receive to achieve. You've got to believe to receive to achieve. If you don't, Visualise it, see it, feel it, understand what it's going to be like in that time, in that moment that you want to receive it. Our brain is very powerful and we can bring forward what we want to have happen if we're fully present and immerse ourselves in our goals and the time and when we want to have things happen. But a lot of the time, we lose a lot of momentum and we lose a lot of enthusiasm because we give up very quickly because it hasn't happened in the time we thought it would. We panic. We get disheartened. We lose momentum. People say to me, by now, by now, they've set some kind of time span I should have by now. This should have been mine by now. I should. Who says? You know, people say you can have everything in life. I don't go by that. I think life presents opportunities and we either take them or not. We make choices. For me, life is all about choices that we make. I think it's futile to have guilt. I think guilt means... You know, it's an indulgent thing and I think that it's unhealthy and I think that if we get stuck in guilt, nobody really benefits from it. I think you have to learn and grow and sometimes we have to make amends. But we certainly have to learn and grow. If we feel guilty, we need to find and unpack what that guilt's about. But I also think that when we look at what we want to have forward in our life, we can achieve it a lot quicker if we are more proactive about how our time is. We often give our power away. 
and feel very disempowered, very stuck in time. And trust me, there are times in my life that time has passed because of different things. And maybe it's been a conscious choice almost to pause and not pursue. And part of that is being in the comfort zone. I've been healing, recharging, I've been recovering. But there's been other times where I've been in the stretch zone where I've been challenging and growing and developing. But we always have to be careful that if we stay in boredom or we go into stretch, strain, and we're in strain for too long, we end up in crisis. And being in boredom and crisis or strain, that's not healthy. The ideal is that we are in stretch and comfort and we go between the two of them. And we have to make time for the things that are important to us. What matters to you? What's important to you? What do you prioritise in your work, in your retirement, in your life? Who do you prioritise? Do you make time? Do you make enough time? Do you enjoy your time? Or is it consumed by worry and stress and strain? Do you think about and plan time to have fun, to have enjoyment? Is there enough time in there for that? You matter. And unless you take responsibility and make time to pursue the things that keep you healthy, who else is going to do it? You see, we are responsible for our happiness. We are responsible. Unless of course unless of course we're vulnerable or we're children and we're reliant and we have a dependency on other people. As adults, we look often to other people. We have expectations that other people will do things. We give a lot of power away. Whether it's in business, you know, whether, you know, it's to an organisation, to our manager, to our teams, whether it's actually in life, we look and turn to other people, our partner, right? Or our friends, or a group, or society, and we expect. But the reality is, we have the responsibility to take in and to pursue. I come from a generation where if you didn't go for it, pursue it, and you didn't make time for it, and you didn't create opportunities for it, well, it just didn't happen, (laughs) right? And if I think back to the generations of my, well, I think about my parents and I think about my grandparents, they, they didn't really get much or have much. They had to fight for it. I don't mean physically fight, but they had to really pursue things because they're very peace-loving people, right? But but they were very strong people, right? That strength and very wise, right? They weren't fools, let me me put it that way. They're very, very wise and very intelligent people. But they, I think it's really important that we understand that if we don't take responsibility, take back control, and I don't mean control as in being controlling, I mean it, Control is in being empowered. And that's being self full That's not about going around being selfish and making it I, 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 it's all about me. It's not about that. I think it's important to have, you know, gratitude and, and be humble and show empathy and compassion. People that know me will see me as a very strong person, but they also know that I have qualities, you know, where I'm very compassionate and caring and giving. But I also am very shrewd. I'm a businesswoman. It's important that we have a balance in life. Through life experiences, we will grow. We will have hard knocks. We have upsets. Things will not go the way we thought they would. But that's life. If we don't recognise that, we will always be completely devastated and on our knees when life doesn't work out the way it's supposed to in our mind. Who says it was supposed to work out the way that you anticipated? 
Sometimes what we wanted isn't necessarily what we need. All in good time come all in good time it comes. And when we remember that, when we feel grateful and gratitude comes, when we think about the things that come to us in life, it might have been a life lesson. It might have been amazing things. It might have been things that we thought were going to be amazing. But then maybe it didn't work out the way we thought it would. Or maybe we've had things and still have things that we feel truly grateful for. We often forget that when something doesn't work out, we forget to be grateful for the experience. Grateful for the person being in our life. Grateful for the experience we had from that particular situation. What we tend to do is we tend to dismiss it. It didn't work out. It was terrible. But it wasn't all terrible. There was parts of it that often showed us something important. We might not have wanted it to happen. We might not have deserved it to have happened. Trust me, in life, I've had pretty horrendous things happen to me. People that know me, my trusted people, are aware, right, of some of them, not all of them, because they don't need to. But through those things, we gain strength. We gain knowledge about ourselves. We gain about what, what is and what isn't okay. We understand about humanness. We understand about things that are important to us. Whether it's about our faith, whether it's about compassion, whether it's about humanity, whether it's about our values, our core values. But until we make time to reflect and process what's happened through an experience... We bounce from idea to idea. We bounce from experience to experience. But we don't really consolidate our growth or learning. It's important that we give ourselves time to heal, to recover and to process. Many people will say to me, you know, when will I feel better? Right? It's understandable that it doesn't feel good to be uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good to feel pain. It doesn't feel good to feel sadness, to feel low moods, to feel depressed, to feel unhappy. But when we feel truly grateful, we are grateful for every emotion and feeling because it means we're alive and we're human. And we also remind ourselves that regardless of how we feel, these emotions come and go and they will pass. Life will move on. We will move on. Reminding ourselves of what we are grateful for. Sometimes people will say to me, I've got nothing to be grateful for. But the very fact that we have breath going through our lungs, the very fact that we might be able to see, the very fact we might be able to hear, the very fact we might be able to have arms and legs and we can use our limbs, the very fact that we might be able to make a decision or a choice, we can always find gratitude if we really trust. We always can find things we're dissatisfied with. But true gratitude is where we find the things that we are grateful for in times of sorrow and heartbreak. And we come through the strength of that gratitude because we're anchored with what we know we still have remaining that keeps us grounded and balanced. And when we make time to focus, when we give time to what matters, when we invest in the people around us, nurturing those relationships and connections, If you're in a relationship, still nurture your friendships. Friends are supposed to embrace the partner you're with. That's part of what a friendship's about. We're supposed to support 
a couple when they're together. We might not like or agree. But there is also a need to be honest. And if you feel that your friend is in a relationship where it's unhealthy, certainly if it's toxic, our friends are supposed to be able to be honest with us because they often will see things that we can't see because we're too close to the fire. We're burning with passion, right? That's what I mean by that. We're too close to what's happening. And we often make allowances and excuses for the bad behaviour. I guess in time we have to be ready. People will say to me, how do I know when it's the right time? Our intuition and our gut will tell us. Being prepared, planning, having overarching look at what might potentially go wrong and figuring that in with some solutions. Being able to take considered risks. Being able to look at decisions. And if you're in a committed relationship, there's never an I, it's always a we. You have to take into consideration what you do and how it impacts on the people around you. Giving time, making time and being within the time. Managing your time. Master your time in life. Because trust me, I've worked with many people. I've had the privilege of being that person at the end of somebody's time. And nobody, nobody wants to have regrets. As far as I'm aware, there is only the now and the moment that I'm aware of. (laughs) And I guess the important thing is to master being fully present in your time.